You may be seated. We're in Acts chapter 2 today. Acts chapter 2, verses 41 through 47. Actually, we'll be there today and next Sunday as well. Acts chapter 2, 41 to 47. Let's pray again together. Father God, thank you. Speak what is true to us today. Lord, speak through your word. Speak through this servant. And Father, may we be those who take it to heart and Lord, put it into practice. Father, may your spirit be upon this time of proclamation for your glory. Thank you for this passage of scripture. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand again as we read Acts chapter 2, 41 to 47. So those who received his word were baptized. And there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and the breaking of bread, and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together, and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings, and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, Attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. You may be seated. As you've heard from me several times, We have two grandsons, five and a half and two and a half. We had them from Friday afternoon till about Saturday noon. So if you see me wobbly, you'll understand why. They are quite energetic. What we are seeing over and over again with those two grandsons is that the younger one wants to mimic the older one. He wants to follow in the older steps. He wants to do what his big brother does. This passage of Scripture helps us to understand that same principle, that same idea. This passage is a summary, a summary of the early church. We find multiples of those throughout the book of Acts. Uh, Luke will summarize what's going on at that time in the church. Here is a very significant one, a remarkable one in that it sets the stage, sets the pattern for what the early church did. Often this passage is looked at as, okay, this is what the early church did This is what we need to do. We're going to do much of that today. In this passage, Luke described the functioning and fruitful early church. He described their functioning and he described how fruitful they were. They functioned well and they were quite fruitful. Today I want us to pose the question, what did they do? We need to understand what they did. So for us then, we need to understand what the early church did and work to practice it. So we need to ask then the question, what should we do? In this sermon, this week and next week, we will do much of this. We will say, they and we. What did they do? What should we do? What did they do? Should we follow suit with that? What should we do? 
What did they do? What should we do? Here I'm trying to help us with New Testament church practices, with those actions and practices which help us with church health and with being the kind of church that God would be pleased with, the kind of church that would pattern us after this early church, the New Testament expression of the early church church. What did they do? What should we do? Some actions here. Let's start with number one. Number one, we should obey. What we find in this passage is that they obeyed. They obeyed, first of all, Peter's proclamation. Pentecost happened, the Holy Spirit came, a crowd came running, and Peter preached the sermon that we dealt with two weeks ago from Joel chapter 2, proclaiming, describing, explaining what happened there at the coming of the Holy Spirit. The people asked, what shall we do? Peter told them, he told them to repent. Repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins and so that the Holy Spirit would come. As we explained two weeks ago, that wasn't about baptismal regeneration. It was about repenting. And at the very moment a person repents, forgiveness of sin happens. The Holy Spirit comes to live within us. The baptizing is an action of of obedience to follow. Repent and then follow in baptism. They did exactly that. They repented, were baptized, and continued to obey. The words obey and obedience are not in this text of Scripture. But obedience runs throughout this passage as it does the entire book of Acts. What we see here is that these folks developed a desire, a passion, a very culture of obedience to Jesus. They understood Jesus Christ to be the the crucified, buried, resurrected, and exalted Lord of all. And they were determined to obey Jesus. They were extremely interested in what Jesus wanted for them. They were extremely interested in what Jesus had to say. They were extremely interested in what pleased the Lord Jesus. And they sought to obey the Lord Jesus. Like they did, we should obey. We should obey initially to repent and then to be baptized. But we need to develop a desire, a passion, even an entire culture to obey Jesus in all things. A pattern of obedience. A culture of obedience. A passion To do what Jesus tells us to do. Again, obedience runs throughout this book. They obeyed. We should obey. But a second action I find in this passage. They did it. We need to do it. We should gather. They gathered together. In verse 41... They are gathered in the sense that they had a large group had come together to un- figure out what happened there at Pentecost. They heard Peter's sermon. They responded to Peter's sermon. They were together. In verse 42, apparently they continued to gather together. They had to gather to do the things that are described of them in verse 42. In verse 44, all who believed were to gather, the text says. In verse 46, 
and day by day, regularly, they just couldn't stay away. They kept on coming. Day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. They gathered together. Again, they gathered day by day, regularly. They gathered in the temple, a large area for them to gather. We need to recognize, we need to understand that these folks did not see themselves as something new. They understood themselves to be a fulfillment of all of the Old Testament, and they were. They were the fulfillment, the Next step in God's plan, they were uh, carrying out all that God had been doing through the ages. They didn't see themselves as something apart from the temple. They eventually had to leave the temple as persecution came, but they were a part of the work of God through the Old Testament. So they gathered regularly in the temple in a larger group. But this passage also says they gathered in houses. Well, I don't think they had houses that would hold all 3,000 of them. So obviously they gathered in multiple houses scattered across Jerusalem. So they gathered together. It was an essential part of being a New Testament church to gather together. Today I want to remind you that yes, as they gathered, we should gather. It is an essential part of being a New Testament follower of Jesus for us to gather with other believers. I encourage you, do not see coming to church... No, we don't come to church. We are the church. We need to be the church that gathers together. Don't see it just as attending, as coming to something. No, see it as gathering, as a part of the functioning of being the church. Gathering, being a part of the church. You can't do that by yourself. You can't do that just with your family. You've got to gather, to be biblical here, to gather with other believers from across your area. To gather with people. The word church, though the word church is not used in this passage, it's certainly prevalent here. The word ecclesia is used some 115 times in the New Testament. It is a, a very important word to the New Testament. About 30 of those times, the word points to either uh, what I would call the redeemed of all the ages, all believers of all time, everywhere, or it points to the church in general, all the believers alive on the earth at the present time. But 85 times, the vast majority points to a local congregation. People, real people, gathering together in the same place from a locale gathered together to be God's people. Now folks, I am excited to be a part of what I would call the redeemed of all the ages. It, it blesses me. I'm excited to think I am a brother to those very folks we're reading about right here. And one day, I'm going to gather with those folks in heaven. That's going to be a special, special time. I'm also excited to be a part of the general church, the church of today. The church of all people across the earth, those who are followers of Jesus. I'm excited about that. 
But you know what I'm more excited about? It's the local body of folks. Folks that I can see. Folks that I can touch. Folks that I can share time with. The local body of believers is important. We are called to gather together. We should gather together regularly as they did. We should gather together in the large group like this as they did. We should gather together in smaller groups as they did for those doing those things that church does, study the word, fellowship together, pray together, support one another. Those are very important. I encourage you to be a person who gathers together with God's people on a regular, consistent basis. Do so in the large group. Do so in the smaller group. I say to you often, a follower of Jesus needs to be a member of a congregation that helps with our accountability and our, our uh, serving within that congregation. But also, a person needs to be a regular active person in the large group worship service and also in a small group Bible study. Thirdly, a way of serving as well. We need all of that. We should gather for God's work. But a third action I find in this passage revolves around the word devote. They devoted themselves. Verse 42, I think the word devoted carries throughout verse 42. So the first action here, the third overall action, is that we should devote ourselves to the study, the teaching, and practice of God's Word. An important question to ask. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. What does that mean? What was the apostles' teaching? Well, it was the Old Testament. Again, they did not see themselves as separating from all that God had done before. No, they were the fulfillment of all that God had done. They devoted themselves to the Old Testament. But also, I am confident that the um, disciples here taught a lot about what Jesus had to say. Jesus, they taught a lot about His teachings, His life, His death, His burial, His resurrection. They taught about His last teachings, about the Great Commission. They taught about the whole counsel of God available to them. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. That carries a lot of implications in it. They regarded the apostles' teaching, the Old Testament, as the Word of God. They understood it that way. They heard the apostles teach. They studied it further. They practiced and obeyed what they had heard, taught, and, and they studied it. They practiced what they had been taught. Well, they did it. What should we do? Well, we should certainly devote ourselves to the Word of God. We need to regard the Word we have now the Old Testament and the New Testament, the full revelation of God available to us. We need to understand it as the Word of God, perfect, infallible, inerrant Word of God, and see it and understand it that way. But folks, I remind you, it does you no good to say anything positive about the Word unless we're going to follow through with studying it and practicing the Word. We have to be doers of the Word and not hearers only. So yes, we should regard the Word as we should 
But then we need to attend and eagerly hear the word taught and preached as we should. We need to study it on our own and then practice it or obey it. Important for us. I want to take you back here to Matthew 28, a passage that we have worked with quite often here. In Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, passage we call the Great Commission, Jesus told the disciples to go to make disciples, help persons become followers, then baptize them, and then teach them to obey. Do you realize that's exactly what these disciples were doing here? They had helped some people come to faith in Jesus. They helped them to be baptized. Now what were they doing? They were teaching them to obey. Teaching them to start putting into practice everything that Jesus had taught. He was at work teaching them. What is our role then? Our role then is to learn. To learn to obey. They were actually doing what Jesus had told them to do. I encourage you today that we need to devote ourselves to the Word of God. What does that mean practically for you? I encourage you that you need to be a person who has what I call a daily devotional time or a daily devotion. You're not really serious about following Jesus unless you have a time when you separate yourself from everybody else and you spend some time in His Word seeking Him and His will and His Word, His way for your life. Spend some time in this Word. Uh, No believer, no church can provide for you everything you need from the Word in what we do on the weekends and another day or two of the week. You need spiritual nourishment every day. Devote yourself to the Word of God. But also we need to devote ourselves on the small group level. I encourage you, yes, every follower of Jesus needs to be involved in a small group where the Word of God is studied, taught, and then lived out, prayed over, and uh, the class helps a person to understand and live out the Word. Practice it. Devote yourself to the Word of God On the small group level. That is crucial for your transformation. That is crucial for you becoming a person to obey. The smaller the group, the more likely you are to catch it and to start obeying it. So practice it. Be devoted to the study of the Word on a small group basis. But also on the large group level. The preaching part of our worship gatherings. The preaching proclamation of the word is crucial for us to practice what an early church did. But it's important because it helps us to know the word and then to live it out. It's important for us to be devoted to the word. Let me ask you. That word devote. Can you use that word of your life? Of your practice on the individual level? The small group level? The large group level? Can you use that word of your practice in the word? To devote yourself to the word of God. To its study. To its teaching. And to its practice. That's what the early church did. That's what we should do. But a fourth action. Is we should devote ourselves to the fellowship. And one another. 
verse 42. Again, this word devoted. They devoted themselves seems to carry right over to these practices in verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, but they also devoted themselves to what? To the fellowship. What does that mean? Does that mean they gathered in a certain part of their facility and had Kool-Aid and cookies? I don't think that's what it means. No. The fellowship here means something entirely deeper than uh, socializing. We had a great time last night and gatherings like that help us to do exactly what I'm trying to impress upon you here that we should be devoted to the body of Christ, the fellowship of believers. Notice what they did. They devoted themselves to the fellowship. They devoted themselves to the body of believers. Their body of believers became extremely, extremely important to them. They loved their church. And as we learn later, they paid a price for that. Some of them died for the sake of their church. Some of them sacrificed for the sake of their church. They were persecuted because of their connection with and their love for this body of believers. They loved one another. They were united in purpose. They were vitally connected for support and strength. This passage also says they devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. Scholars differ there on whether that's pointing to the observing of the Lord's Supper. By the way, we'll do that on November 20th, just in a few weeks. Or whether to the breaking of bread points to them sharing meals together on a consistent basis as a part of the church being together and the importance of the fellowship. Well, notice again on what levels was this fellowship. They, it, had, it related to their gathering. They gathered as a large group. They loved the fellowship of one another within the large group. But they also gathered in smaller groups. They were devoted to that fellowship, to the body of believers, both in the large group and in the smaller group. They devoted themselves to the fellowship and to one another. What should we do? We should do the same. What is my call for you here? It's simply to love your church. Be devoted to this body of believers. Recognize the importance of the church itself. Recognize the importance of it in God's work, but also the importance of it in your life. Somebody has said that our priorities ought to be Jesus, family, and church, everything else below that. Church simply ought to be extremely important to us to devote ourselves to this local congregation. Again, I'm excited. I'm excited about being a part of the uh, universal church, the redeemed of all the ages. I'm excited about being a part of the general church, the uh, church of today across our world. But it's so very important to be a part of a local congregation and to devote yourself. Devote yourself to it. In my spiritual formation class, we study spiritual disciplines. Spiritual disciplines that help us with health, spiritual health. 
that lead to our spiritual growth. One of those is church participation. Not church attendance, but church participation. God's principle is when we invest ourselves, when we devote ourselves to other like-minded believers, God does something incredible with that. He uses us as the people of God, but He also transforms our lives. I, again, simply encourage you, devote yourselves to this body of believers and just see what God will do in and through you and in your life. He will transform you because of and through what He does through bodies of believers. A fifth action I find in this passage Something they did that we should do, we should devote ourselves to prayer. Verse 42 again, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to the fellowship and they devoted themselves to the prayers. I need to do more study what he means by the prayers, I guess just multiple prayers taking place but we need to be devoted to prayer again they did we find in chapter 1 verse 14 that they prayed in chapter 2 verse 1 they prayed here in uh, chapter 2 verse 1 and here in chapter 2 verse 42 they prayed prayed as we continue in the book of Acts what are we going to find they were a church of prayer they understood that praying was an essential part of being a New Testament church they understood their dependence upon God and their dependence upon God's empowering, they understood that they could not do what God had called them to do without supernatural empowering, so therefore they prayed to the Lord. Their praying was probably a lot of worshiping the Lord, praising Him, thanking Him for what he had done for them in recent days going to the cross being resurrected and now helping them the Holy Spirit of God coming to live in them but they also understood the commission of the Lord Jesus and they recognized they could not be obedient to Jesus in their own flesh, in their own abilities, in their own way of doing things. They needed the empowering of God upon them. So they devoted themselves to prayer. Again, based on what we understand about them in the passages we've covered so far and what we're going to see in the, throughout the book of Acts, this was a praying congregation here and that carried over to all the congregations that they started out from this one. They were devoted to prayer. Now, I do not have time today to develop everything there is about this today. We'll catch it multiple times through our journey, in our journey through the book of Acts. They were devoted to prayer. We should be devoted to prayer. Like I said earlier about the Word. You need a time every day when you find your private place, your prayer closet, your private room. You go there and as Jesus said in Matthew 6, 
go to your room and close the door. And you pray. Pray to the Father. Your life will not be what it needs to be without you doing that. But now I encourage you as a part of that to pray for your church. A part of being devoted to the word, a part of being devoted to the fellowship, is to be devoted to pray for your congregation. My friends, we need the power of God upon us. To do what God has called us to do, we can't do it ourselves. We need the power of God upon us that comes only through prayer. I encourage you to devote yourselves to prayer personally, privately, but also we have work to do to being a praying congregation corporately. We need to develop more of an extensive, intensive, corporate, church-wide prayer ministry where we seek the very presence and the empowering of God upon us. They devoted themselves to prayer. We should devote ourselves to prayer as well. Let's bow our heads together, please. Today, there are lots of responses you could make to this sermon. Some of you obviously need to do as these persons did initially. They heard Peter's proclamation about Jesus. He called them to repent, to receive his forgiveness, to receive the Holy Spirit into their lives. It may be that you need to make that initial response of repenting. Let us help you with that. Whether that's immediately now or soon after. Let us help you with turning your life, calling upon the Lord for salvation. Some of you need to follow Him in baptism. You've already committed yourself to Him. You need to be obedient and do that. We all are called to obedience. Maybe you need Confess before the Lord, your obedience is not where it needs to be. Are you devoted? Devoted to the Word? To the fellowship, to the church? To prayer? Is that word devote a word that someone else would use about you? And your practice? Related to these matters. Maybe there are decisions that you need to make. Responses you need to make before the Lord today. About these. Father help us. Guide us and lead us. As we seek to be those who. Passionately. In a devoted kind of way. Are obedient. To the Lord Jesus. In his name I pray, amen.